fight from within. You're about to go behind enemy lines. Republic of New York City. You're now going behind enemy lines with Gene Baradelli and Russ Gallo. Now. Behind enemy lines. Hey there, how you doing, America? Gene Baradelli here with you, wrapping up 2016. We're our year in review show. Glad you're here with us wherever you're listening. Hope you're joining us at www.behindenemylinesradio.us or if you're listening on any one of our podcasts or rebroadcast outlets, we really appreciate that. Before we get going with the show, special shout out to our newest rebroadcast outlet, part of the Red Nation Rising Radio Network. WLBB, 1330 AM. Glad you're joining the Behind Enemy Lines family. We really appreciate that. Out of Carrollton, Georgia. Now, I got to be honest with you. I got to find it on the map. <laughs> but, you know, this city boy here in the in the Yankee North, we I appreciate you listening. And, uh, you know, we're glad to be part of the Red Nation Rising family. We love doing the show. Uh, believe it or not, I'm looking up on a map right now, located in West Georgia, USA, in the Appalachian, in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. Well, I hope my accent isn't scaring you all, <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you tuning in and joining us as part of the Red Nation Rising Radio Network. And if this is your first taste of the show, hope you like it, hope you come back for more, and we really appreciate you listening, as we do with all of our rebroadcast outlets, which we'll be mentioning throughout the show. But it's our year in review show. So we're going to be playing some interviews we did throughout the year. Some really good ones. I mean, listen, we had a great year. I mean, from traveling to CPAC like we always do and Value Voters Summit to going to the Faith and, and Freedom Hold Their Feet to the Fire uh, event, Hold Their Feet to the Fire, being an, uh, an immigration awareness event in D.C. It was great. It was just such a great year. So many great interviews to choose from. Lots of Lots of people came on the show for the first time, but we're going to try to make this as much of a year in review as we are trying to make it relevant and looking towards next year. We're going to have an interview with Roger Stone that we did, and we'll be discussing uh, Donald Trump right around the time when he left the Trump campaign, the beginning of the Trump campaign. We want to take a look back at that, and we want to see what it was like back then to see how far we've come to now for the for a Trump presidency. We'll also be talking with, uh, or sh- I shouldn't say talking with, we did talk with Sam Sorbo. Uh, syndicated radio host and uh, talking about homeschooling. Uh, again, a very topical issue. One of those what I like to call evergreen topics that we can always discuss and and go back to and, and look at. And also our interview from the uh, Hold Their Feet to the Fire Radio Row event with Congressman Lou Barletta talking about sanctuary cities, a topic that's being discussed right now with uh, the, tr- the incoming Trump administration and the conflicts that he'll be having with uh, you know, San Francisco, the People's Republic of New York City, and, and other places, as the debate will rage on as to whether these municipalities and these uh, governmental organizations can have their cake and eat it too. Can they keep taking federal money and keep flouting the immigration law? But you know what? I want to just say, before we get to everything, 2016 coming to a close, 2017 in front of us, it's time to take stock in where we are as a nation, in our own personal lives, and time to not just look back, but look forward. Yes, we'll be looking back on this show, and we'll be checking out some of the great work we did, but the best is yet to come for Behind Enemy Lines Radio. For those of you who don't know, maybe you're in WLBB territory or wherever you are, uh, we had a great year, as as we seem to always do. We've been very blessed on this show, in, in that sense. We were nominated for a podcast award, almost won it, uh, for all I know. We were a finalist for it. We were one of the top ten political shows nominated by listeners. That was the great thing about this award. It wasn't just a, you know, a, an insider's award or, you know, one that a click or a cadre of people would just select. This was the listeners nominating us for this award. 
So we're greatly appreciative of all of our listeners. And the fact that they, you nominated us for this was, was absolutely amazing. We've also been blessed in getting a lot of great guests on the show. And as I look back at some of the names we talked with, like John Bolton, who was up for Secretary of State, uh, Van Hip, who was up for Secretary of the Army, uh, un- under, you know, President-elect Donald Trump, both weren't selected, but both were, were in the running to see how far we've come and how far up the chain of influential politicos and personalities we've reached. Absolutely mind boggling. I'm, I was rooting so hard for, for Ambassador Bolton and for, for Van to, uh, to get those respective positions. It was, it was great to see their names in the news and we, us jumping up and down trying to, trying to get him and, uh, get both of them, I should say, uh, into those positions. I mean, what can we do? We're a little rinky dink show, right? But we were there applauding and, and cheering right in the front row for them. And then, you know, the camaraderie that the show brings, the, the fans and the response from people online and in person. I mean, listen, when we go to an event and you have a banner that says the People's Republic of New York City, you're bound to strike up a conversation. So we're always happy, uh, to talk to fans all the time. And, and, you know, the show bring, brought my circle of friends, uh, including, you know, Russ Gallo, who, um, WBB people listen to past shows and you'll hear Russ and you'll probably love him. Uh, especially, you know, all, all the friends and family and friends and family together slash, you know, friends slash family, our family of friends. That's, it's, uh, it's so great to, to see and so great to experience and be a part of. Can't believe we've been doing this for so long. It's like, this is our sixth year. And as we close out this year and look back at some of the best work we've done, I just want to say thank you to everybody for listening. Thanks to everybody for sticking with us over the years. Thanks for believing in us. And we hope you enjoy this look back as much as we did in doing it throughout the year. Here's our interview with Roger Stone. And really, this was an interview that we, we uh, like with most things, we luck ourselves into. We just were in the right place at the right time. Got into a, a great discussion with some friends of friends of his. And his book about the Clintons had come out. And we were discussing the book and discussing his experiences with the Trump campaign when he was formally a part of it. It was a great interview. Here, check it out. On the line with me right now, I have the pleasure of speaking with the author of The Clinton's War on Women, probably the one person that I know of in politics that knows just about everything there is to know about politics. I'm talking about Roger Stone. Roger, thanks for coming on the line with us. Gene, thanks for having me. I gotta say, this book is probably uh, the most explosive one, and of course I'm talking about The Clinton's War on Women. What gave you the idea to to actually blow the lid off of uh, The Clinton? Well, uh, Hillary's phoniness gets under my skin. The idea that she has ever been an advocate for women or children or girls and, and children is just completely bogus. In fact, she is a lifetime abuser of women. Um, well, she's an advocate for women as long as you're not one of those women unlucky enough to have been sexually assaulted by her red-faced husband, uh, in which case you now become a target of Hillary and her wrath. First, she uh, and her and her uh, goons denounce you as uh, a bimbo, a slut, a whore, trash. You see, in their view, it's it's the woman's fault when Bill assaults them sexually. Uh, and then, more importantly, she is the one, as I show in the book, who hires the heavy-handed private detectives, who then wage a veritable terror campaign against Bill's victims in order to silence them. Uh, and um, put it another way, first Bill abuses them. Physically, then Hillary abuses them psychologically. Um, and therefore, I think it's very important to show that the entire narrative, indeed, the entire raison and d'etre of her campaign is a fraud. Yeah, and, and the book, uh, you go through, uh, along with, uh, Robert Morrow, who's, uh, helped you research it, you go through a whole litany of, of crimes and cover-ups. Now, I thought I knew all there was to know about, uh, Clinton cover-ups and scandals. But there are some things in here, like uh, Bill going to drug rehab, abandonment of an African American son, uh, the real identity of Chelsea Clinton's father. Oh my goodness, Roger! The things in here that I've never heard mentioned. Why hasn't it been mentioned before? Well, it has been. All these things have been reported elsewhere, but they get suppressed by the mainstream media. So everything in my book is carefully documented. 
is carefully uh, footnoted. I mean, I was on Fox 5 with Greg Kelly last week, who I like, but he was very much on offense saying everything in this book has been discredited. It's all been disproved. No, Greg, not a word of it has been discredited. Not a word of it has been disproved. Let's take the, let's take the example of Bill fathering an African-American boy, Danny Williams. Danny Williams uh, is the product of a union of Bill Clinton and his mother, Bobby Ann Williams, who is, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately was a cocaine-addicted prostitute. Uh, Danny Williams is no longer a boy. He's now a full-grown man with five children of his own. And Bill Clinton refuses to acknowledge his son, to, to hold him, to love him, to nurture him, to support him. Uh, the Star published a piece in 1999 saying that a DNA test disproved that Bill Clinton was the father of Danny Williams. That's a lie. The Star was owned at that time by a man named Robert Altman, who was a major donor to the Clintons, a major donor to the Clinton Foundation, and a friend of Bill. There is no DNA test. It does not exist. But it jumped from the Star, thanks to George Stephanopoulos, to the Washington Post, and Howie Kurtz uh, of the Washington Post printed it as a fact. The truth of the matter is that Say, the Reverend Say McIntosh, who was uh, the minister for the Williams family, began badgering Governor Clinton in public, put out a press release, started following Clinton around in his collar with a sign demanding a blood test. And then suddenly, out of the blue, Reverend McIntosh's son, who was in the Arkansas State Penitentiary, and ineligible legally for pardon, got a full pardon, gets out of jail, and the good reverend goes silent. Bobby Ann Williams, the Danny's mother, described in great detail the exact floor plan of Bill's uh, mother's home. And when asked, why do you insist that Bill Clinton uh, is Danny's father? I mean, you were a prostitute. You presumably were seeing many men. She said, yes, but I was only seeing only one white guy. And that was Bill Clinton. And, and listen, I appreciate you going into detail, but we don't want to give away too many details from the book. We want everybody to go out and buy this book because you, you're going to be shocked and amazed. Now, one thing I have to ask you, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask it, Roger, is this book and the timing of it intended to go after Hillary Clinton as uh, she is trying to be the commander-in-chief? Let me put it in more favorable terms. This book is to explain her to the American electorate before they make an enormous mistake and elect this congenital liar and fraud president. Uh, Hillary Clinton is not the woman you see on TV. She's not some kindly grandmother. She's a foul-mouthed, short-tempered, volcanic, greedy, power-mad, control freak. Uh, and this is proven over and over again in the book. She is a, she's a great actress, although I would argue that she's incapable of sounding sincere. She could be reading the breakfast menu and she would sound like she's lying. She's lying in front of the Benghazi committee today. Uh, for example, as I reveal in the book, the whole idea that the attack on our mission in Benghazi was caused by an anti-Islamic video that showed one time on the Internet in Turkey, that was invented by uh, her hatchet man, her hit man, Sidney Blumenthal, who was on the payroll of the Clinton Foundation because the Obama people refused to put him on the federal payroll. But we have the email in which he told Hillary, here's what you say. Say it was caused by a video. This is all designed to get the Democrats and to get the Clintons and the Obamas through the next election, which, as you recall, was only weeks later. Hillary Clinton did not want to admit in the run-up of a presidential election that American interests abroad were attacked by a group affiliated with al-Qaeda. So she she and her, and her, her quizzling... Uh, Mr. Blumenthal invented this lie about a video, and then, when told by American intelligence services at the highest level that that was not true, that it was a precision military operation that attacked our Benghazi, not a mob, not a crowd, she continued to tell that lie. She looked the parents of four Americans who died in Benghazi in the face, and she told that lie again. So um, I, I think it's important for people to understand that it doesn't matter whether it's being under sniper fire in Bosnia, or whether it is misplacing the whitewater uh, billing records, or whether it is uh, the disposition of her email server, and whether or not it had classified documents, or whether she was really named after Sir Edmund Hillary, or whether her parents were really immigrants. The woman is a congenital liar. I, I definitely tend to believe everything that you're saying, mainly because... 
the tactics that you talk about in your book are now being